a good chunk of the evening. I was up a good chunk of the evening um, uh, uh, getting everybody ready. So you may or may not have gotten a little notice in your inbox when you woke up this morning, or if you haven't checked, when you next check, that says something like, hey, you've signed up to Together an Ocean or to Scalar or something, something of that nature. Um, and uh, uh, it's great. So that means we should be ready to go and we, and we can actually start entering and collaborating in this, this digital uh, book space. And so what we're gonna do today is what I was planning on doing last week is, is going over the just logistics of how we do that and spending some time um, making sure everybody is, is okay with this new tool, this new cool tool that we're gonna do. Actually first, before I go on, let me just, let me just post these things for you in the chat. Um, okay. real quick just do this okay so i'm gonna post for you guys there's there's three things oh i posted it twice sorry so the first one is going to be um the link that's going to take you to our the login site for our book um when you go to log in you're going to use your um email address your csuci email address and the password I posted in there, everybody has the same password. So I recommend after you logged on um, and we've done a little bit of exercise and you have a minute or two to please, you know, maybe before you finish class today, um, you change it to whatever a password works for you. Something that's not the generic password. Um, and, uh, and we'll be, we'll be good to go. So why don't we take a quick, um, you know, just like three, four minutes, and if you guys could please let me know, maybe I screwed up, maybe this isn't gonna work, but if you could try clicking on that link, it should take you to a dialog window, when it, then it'll say, you know, what's your email address, and then what's your password. And you should, hit those, should be able to hit those two things and you should get into a dialog box that says something about Together in Ocean or Scalar or something of that nature. So if you guys could try that and let me know that that's working, that would be great. Yeah, it works. I logged on. Okay, cool. Okay, so with that, let's get back to screen sharing. Okay, great. So, um, all right. So, so this is our, this is our cool new tool. Um, and what the goal for today's uh, class is to make sure everybody understands what the scalar thing is, understands how to do the basic entry. There's, there's a lot more cool, sophisticated whiz bang stuff we can do with this, but you know, just to make sure we can do the basic thing, which is essentially uh, entering text and um, doing some you know, basic manipulation of that, that text, adding hyperlinks and, and that, type stuff and adding media in adding videos adding in um, images so that's the main goal for for this morning cool all right let's do it so as i just mentioned i just i just posted this to everyone and so this is this is our link so i would i would save this write this down or, or, or copy and paste this in one of your um remember spots or whatever um, but that is the um, site for our Together an Ocean book. Okay, so I'm going to go over this so everybody, and again, and again, if I'm going too fast, you guys just interrupt me. So rather than walking through everything, I'm going to go through in slide form how we can do this stuff, and then I'll pause every so often and have you guys try doing, try doing some things. And then if we're stuck, I can jump on the site and I can show you some, some um, uh, real time how to do some stuff if there's a question. Um, but, uh, but I think it'll be faster if, I, if we go this way. So this is the dashboard. If you guys haven't logged on, it'll look something like this. Now, you will only have one book, so there won't, won't be a ton of, where it says my books, won't be a ton of things there. They've also just, there's an option to look at the new dashboard, 
So they're constantly updating the software. And so it might look a little bit different, but all the key elements will be here, even if you use a, a more uh, revised version or if you use the basic version. Um, okay, so, so it has some things here, it talks about books, et cetera. Um, if you, now that you guys are into the system, um, you don't need to do this for our class, but if you wanted to for another class or just because you're, you're interested for your, your personal interests or whatever, you can actually create your own book from here on out. And so you can just uh, go ahead and say, create a new book and you guys can make your own version of, of this or, or any other uh, version that you'd like. Um, uh, yeah, and so if you, if you do start to get to have multiple, multiple versions or multiple projects, multiple books, if you will, you can just make sure you go up in the upper left and, and, and pick which one you're talking about when you start to do the media, messing with the pages, et cetera. Um, so uh, this is our first step. So our first step is creating a page. I've gone in and I've made a little single page, placeholder page for each of your different groups, each of the different teams. So there's just one page, just so there's, there's something to start with. You will all have to add additional page. Actually, the, the Abalone group, I started adding in all your subsections and it got totally crazy. So the Abalone folks can delete those pages. I, I didn't delete them yet, but, but uh, you're more than welcome to use those or you can tweak them. I, I was originally thought, oh, I'll make everybody's pages and subsets for them and, and nested pages, and it just got totally out of control. Um, but every group has at least one page. You will have to make more pages as we go through this through the semester. So this is the first key skill. Um, now, uh, as we as we go forward with this, and as we learn all the the you know fancy cool things, and I'm sure you guys will way outstrip my knowledge very quickly. Um, but uh, the cool thing is we're making content here. And the key goal that we're doing is making high quality content that is um, tagged up, that, 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 that has uh, you know, well-referenced, well, well uh, metadata, if you will. Um, and so we can then repurpose that as we like. And as you'll see, similar to WordPress and some of these other uh, modern uh, web tools, um, the content is really king. The content is what we care about. It's great to have pretty wrapping. It's, it's important to have aesthetically pleasing things and make it easy for people to read and digest and all that stuff, which is, which is definitely useful in terms of scientific communication. But, but all those things can be tweaked. <laughs> tweak, 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 tweak. The key thing is you guys have the cool content and the stuff has been collected in a way that is rigorous and we can relate it to other pieces of information, however it's displayed. So the key thing here are, is, is the page. That, that's the main nugget of, of text information. And so uh, what you do is you just go into that particular tab, hit pages, and then say create new. And um, you can make a page. And then we'll, you, know, you can make many, many, many pages. And it's very simple, very much like doing a blog. Within each of those pages, you can add stuff and things are basically broken down into um, headings and there's different levels of headings. And then there's the body text, the main, the main um, uh, information that you're entering or you've, you've created or synthesized or what have you. There's also media objects, but we'll, we'll hold on that for a second. Um, so our first step is we'll take a quick break here and I'm not sure how to do this uh, on if zoom is the right way to do this uh, with everybody on a big group so if this this starts to get too weird we can also break up into little um, breakout rooms but the idea here is uh, everybody if you've not logged on please log on and if there if somebody does have a problem if somebody can't log on or if I screwed up and I didn't add somebody in or I forgot someone uh, let me know but assuming you can get in, what I want you guys to do is make a page. And I want you, and just because this is sort of more of a playing around item, um, it'll be your last name and sandbox one. So everybody, so if I did it, I would call it Anderson Sandbox One. Um, because probably after today, we, we might want to delete this after we're just playing around for a few minutes. So, uh, so there we go. So what I want you to do is create a page and then either sort of randomly type or, or copy a block of text 
a great practice would be to go to your draft um, sandbox in your, in your Google Docs site, grab a paragraph or a couple paragraphs of the text from your draft material and just paste it in there. But, but any, any old text is fine. So I want you to, to add some stuff in there and have at least two, two headings uh, inside that text somewhere. It could be the top of the text, could be after paragraph one, et cetera. So we'll take just a quick uh, five minutes and I will um, uh, pause my screen share so that I can um, see you guys better if you have problems and we'll go from there. Cool? And I'm just gonna hang out. If you guys have problems, just, just yell at me. are recording. Okay, so um, so Loretta, do you see a dashboard that looks like this? No. Okay, so then, um, so you maybe see something like this. You see a page or something like this? That's what I see. Okay. So see the little wrench? See the little wrench, dude? Just smack the wrench. And then you should see something that says dashboard and a bunch of things. Where's the wrench? Uh, show you. So if we look, so here's the page, right? Here's the, here, I mean, I, I, I might be on a different page than you, but here's what the pages look like. And at the top, the uppermost bar, the like, top of the web dialog box, there's a, there's a plus, there's, a, there's an edit pencil, et cetera, and then there's sort of an, a person icon and just to the left of it is a wrench. And if I smack that, I should be taken back to the dashboard. Does that work for you? Hang on a second. I keep having to go exit full screen back to full screen. <laughs> yes, I see the wrench. Okay, so then smack the wrench, you get to the dashboard and then you can just go to the tab that says pages right here. Okay. And if I just boink, hit pages, and then I can just come over. I mean, again, this is like, this is just like GIS. This is like Photoshop. There's a million ways to do this. And there's shortcuts and things. I'm just showing you guys sort of the kind of default, default uh, old school way to do this. But you can also do this uh, with shortcuts and things. But so I've, I've gone to the dashboard, I've gone to the pages, and there's this little button over here. It says create new page. And if I smack that dude, it's good there, boom, there's my new page. So I can type in a title, every page has to have a title. Um, and then I can just start putting my stuff in here. And I could just call this uh, my last name, Anderson <clears throat> Sandbox One. And uh, I, can, I can, you know, boom, 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 boom. All right. And so this is all just, this is all just body. And then if I want to come up here and say, this is my title, <clears throat> I can sort of, you know, select that line and I can come up here and I can make this heading one or, or heading two or whatever, whatever I want to do. And then once I do this, and this is really important, everybody, just to make sure we're all on the same page, it should be obvious, but just, just to make sure at the bottom of these pages, there's going to be a, a, a save a save and view in which case you can see how it, you know, make sure you, it's looking like the way you thought it would look, but hit one of those, the save and view or save to make sure you don't lose your, lose your stuff. And that's it. And um, if I were to go back now and smack the wrench again, smack the wrench again and go back and look at my pages, there should be an Anderson sandbox one. There's my page right there. Cool. Okay, so I was doing that. I wasn't looking at my uh, desktop, so I didn't see if people thumbed up or whatever. So I'm gonna stop sharing for one quick second. Look over here. Can you guys give me a thumbs up again if you're if you're good or it makes sense. All right, cool. Okay, looks like most people are good. So I'll give you guys another minute and then we'll move on. 
So, uh, uh, Eric, hope you're okay. Cause Eric cut out a little bit on his internet, but I hope, I hope, uh, I hope that's making sense, dude. I'm going to jump back over here. Okay. Um, so pretty simple stuff, right? I mean, hit new, throw some stuff in there. We're good to go. Um, okay. So obviously you guys saw this is where we put our text in. Oh man, all this sharing makes it hard for me to see stuff. Um, okay. So here we go. So, so here's, here's what it look like. You know, we have some random thing in here. We have some title, we have some stuff. All that good, all that good jazz. Um, and like I said before, you can always go back and find your pages and mess with it, right? Or, or edit it or come back and, and keep tweaking it, all that good stuff. Now, um, if we were doing this, uh, I don't know, if we were doing this to be like a, a full published book, we might not want everything published yet. We might want to save things in sort of a um, draft form. But we don't care about that, right? We're, we're just doing this for our class exercise. So we're just going to save everything and not worry uh, if, it's, if it's seen or, or unseen. It'll, it'll, all be, it'll all be good. There won't be a million people looking at this or anything. Um, but nevertheless, we could always come back to our pages and we could make things uh, fully viewable or only partially viewable, et cetera. Um, okay, next activity. Go in and make a second page. So same thing, your last name, Sandbox2. Same thing. Some text, a couple different headings. So in the next uh, minute or two, everybody should have two pages uh, that they've created since we started. And you guys pop me off with a thumbs up when you when you guys are good to go, and then we'll, I'll keep going when most folks have gotten it. Tess is rocking. Tess, and, Tess had the thumb up like almost instantly. Man, she's a Monday person. And Autumn is very close behind. All right, Eric's good. Looks like Eric's good to go now with all the internet burps. That's good. All right, here we come. People are starting to flood in now. Cool. 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 All right. And just making sure uh, that I don't, I don't see anything in the chat, but just want to check before we go any further, everybody was able to log on, right? But it, was anybody unable to log on to our, our Together in Ocean site? Uh, I did. Uh, I missed out the, on the first 10, 15 minutes of class. Oh, I'm sorry, Rafael. So let me just, uh, I'll just repost this for you. It's all good. So this is just, we're, we're just going over um, how to the, the folks, fr the um, people from USC fixed the code thing um, for me that, that wasn't working. And, uh, and so we're able to edit. And so la early this evening, uh, or early this evening, early this morning, I added everybody in. And so let me just repost for you how to get in real quick. Mm -hmm. So again, th this is the lame thing with Zoom. I don't know why when you guys come on late, why you can't see the, the, even when it's a group chat, I don't know why you can't see the group stuff. But let me just repost this so he has that. Okay, so there's, that's the link you click on. The logon is just your CSUCI email address, and then the password is there. And so before we totally leave for today, I recommend you guys change your password in the, in the settings, but for now you can just log on. And all we did was go to the uh, dashboard tab, and which is the little wrench thing, go to the pages and just practice making two pages. And so we're just making our last name and sandbox, throwing some text in, throwing some headings in. That's all we're doing. All right, thank you. No worries. Anybody else besides Raphael that, that, that wasn't able to get on or, or missed the instructions? Nick, you okay? Was that you're good or is that? Is that that your was not good, yeah. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool.
Okay, great. Perfect. No worries. Um, all right, with that, I'm going to keep going. Okay, so now we should all have two pages in there, a little, little bit of text or real text or garbly text, doesn't matter, and some headings. Okay, so next let's talk about media. When we say media in the context of Scalar, so this tool was really created primarily for visual curation. You can do pure text, that's totally fine, but it's really designed to be a digital first tool. What do I mean by that? I mean, most of the tools we have, do I have any books around me? Uh, no, I have, what is this? I have some kind of book of lists. I don't know what the hell that is, but the book of lists, right? So normally when we do this kind of stuff, right? There's somebody, a typewriter who is, well, this is kind of a crappy example. It's a bunch of like a magazine type thing. But uh, anyway, regardless, if I had better props, <laughs> Um, somebody would be typing, 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 typing. Originally on a type, originally handwritten, then on a typewriter. Now these days on our computer pro word processor primarily. And we get it done like, okay, now we want to add the, the visual part of it. Now we want to add the photographs. Now we want to add the layout, et cetera. The idea with, with um, Scalar is the opposite. The idea is let's not start with something that's two dimensional or three dimensional, excuse me and then sort of clip things on. And then when we're all done with that, somehow suck that into a PDF, go through a PDF converter and have that go on to some uh, Adobe viewer or some Google translator or something like that. Rather instead, let's birth the content first and foremost to be digital first. And then maybe down the road at the end, if we want to make a book, a, you know, a physically printed book, maybe we could do that, but digital, it, with the thinking with behind this effort was digital should be first, right? Pretty much we're now in the digital age. Why are we still making uh, books and, and texts and things the way we were 50 years ago? Um, and so that's the idea. So media, visual, um, non-text things are a primary focus of the folks who created this. These, are, these folks were, uh, what we now refer to as digital humanitarians or folks that are working in the space called digital humanities. And so they are taking, and so, you know, we might think of ESRM or ecology or physics or something like that as very, as visual, right? We, we find some data and we, we, we graph it, right? A bar graph, scatter plot, something of that nature. Overfishing, here's a picture of the fish anatomy. Here's a picture of the, the fish in the nets or something like that. Not all, humanities work that way. A lot of humanities are very text-based. So think of someone writing a novel, uh, think of someone doing poetry, stuff of that nature. And so consequently, historically, those groups have lagged a little bit behind. So this movement for digital humanities is an effort to bring um, digital curation and digital presentation of content uh, to the forefront. And so they created a thing called vector and they did some other stuff and got some money and then they created this tool called scalar it's based out of usc but it's a consortium of many many people from from all around um, that help with this and so in the context of that media here refers to both images and video it also refers to audio but for the most part we're talking images and video so when and so every page that you make has to have at least one media, this isn't a rule of scalar, this is a rule of Dr. A, has to have at least one media image and hopefully several, right? A map, a diagram, a photograph, another, a graph, something of that nature, right? Maybe a YouTube video explaining or illustrating an example, something of that nature. Okay, so we have two options for that. The first one is if the, the file size is less than about two megabytes, you can upload it directly into Scalar. And you can use the media tab, just throw, throw that, that item in there, either a very short video or a JPEG or whatever. If the item is larger than that, um, 
what the best practice is, is to not upload it directly to Scalar, to upload it to another service, and then uh, simply link from Scalar, from, link from Together in Ocean to that site. So the classic one here would be videos, because videos get very um, memory intensive very quickly, right? They get very large very quickly. So rather than uploading a bunch of videos into the memory banks of our um, book, the idea is we'll upload them to say YouTube and then we'll embed the YouTube link. And so that does a couple things. One, um, it, uh, we usually in these contexts have space limitations, particularly when we're doing something like a class project, we have lots of different people working on this together. And so we don't, we're not really sure how much memory people are, are taking up with their stuff. So it's, it's, a, it's a good practice to do that. Secondly, um, if, you have, if we have tons and tons and tons of locally um, uh, stored images, sometimes that can make the website load more slowly than it otherwise would. Um, and so for both those reasons, less than two megabytes, go ahead and put it in directly into the media uh, um, part of the website. If not, we'll just embed a link. Cool. And so a class, there's many ways to do that. You could put it under Google Drive and link to it. If you make it, you know, seeable, shareable, you could put it onto Flickr. You could put it onto YouTube. You could put it onto Vimeo. You could put it onto a whole host of, of sites uh, and, and sharing sites, either that you control directly or that are, are relatively convenient and easy to use. Cool. Okay, so how do we do that? So again, there's, there's several ways, but we're just gonna show you the, the simplest way. We're gonna hit that wrench at the top and go back to our dashboard, click the media tab, and then just simply say, upload a file. Um, you can also do things like you can embed things from some of their, their um, uh, uh, internet collaborators that, that work really well with them. So again, this is, this is based, I should have, if I didn't say this, it's not just based out of USC, it's based out of the USC library. So these are librarians that are, that are um, part of, it's, it's an interdisciplinary team, but, but librarians are the major driving force of this project. And so these are folks that, that collaborate, there's different archives that collaborate with them. So you can jump to one of those, or you can, um, again, just upload it directly or some other URL. Um, same thing with YouTube. We can, we can embed a, a YouTube link. Okay, so once we get that media, or once we find that media that we wanna, wanna embed in our page, um, there's two main ways, uh, two, two broad flavors of how we can put that media into our page. Um, so we can just put it on the side, on the side of the page and, and just you know, stick it in there and, and it shows up uh, you know, alongside other stuff. Or it can be in line, meaning it's gonna go across the whole, the whole width of the page and it's not, it's not gonna be super integrated necessarily with the text, it's just gonna sort of stand aside. Um, Either there, there's no right or wrong; they're just different flavors for how you do it. But you will, you when you go to embed it, you need to pick which one of these you wanted to do. Um, and so, how would I do that? Okay, so I go into my um, my page, and then I'd say, "Here's some text that I want to reference." So I'd say something like, uh, "And there's over harvesting of seafood or something, right?" And then when I say over harvesting or over harvesting of seafood, I would highlight that text, and I would um, uh, click. Uh, one of these buttons, one of these, when I highlight it, one of these blue buttons would be the option I could follow. And so, um, seems to block in my view. Okay, so, so uh, yeah, so that's basically how you do it. Either this first one, this first one here with the, with the sort of big triangle, that would be just the, the general scalar media link and then the inline one, right? The one that is, it goes like across the whole way. That's the one, next one to the right. So there we go. Want you guys to uh, another activity. So uh, upload an image, make it small. Don't have it a massive one, but something on your desktop or something, something oh. somewhere. And uh, go ahead and just go to the dashboard, upload that image, give it an appropriate name. And uh, once you've done that, um, uh, you can embed it on your, onto your, um, one of your pages, say, say your first page, and then try to also embed a YouTube video. 
So we'll take another, you know, three, four minutes here to let you guys do that. And I'll stop screen sharing so I can see your comments and questions. Okay, let's see. And just like before, after you guys get through this, just give me a thumbs up when you've, when you've gone through and I'll get a sense of when people are mostly done. How are we doing, my people? Everybody okay? Thumbs up if you guys are uh, done. How long does it take to upload a video? Remember, remember if it's if it's a super short video, it should be pretty quickly. I mean, it depends on your internet, I suppose. But generally speaking, most videos are probably just going to want to embed or link to from YouTube. But yeah, that, that, that's going to really depend on your internet speed and everything. I've actually not tried uploading any videos. So I've, I've been trained with WordPress to, for any videos, you know, um, just put them on an external site and link to them. But when I've uploaded some um, uh, still images a little bit ago, they seem to go fairly quickly. Now, part of it might be, again, uh, I've not tested this when all of us are simultaneously accessing our site at the same time. So that if, if you guys are finding something is being a little laggy, it, it could well be because we're all, um, we're all creating new things simultaneously and trying to put stuff in memory simultaneously. That could possibly, if, if you're finding it slow, that could be possible, possible, a part of the problem. Ashley's first page is red. I've never seen that before. Nice, Ashley. I don't know why it's 
why it's why it looks red in the in the uh thing oh somebody else has a media that's that's got a one Okay, so more, more getting uploaded now, I can see. It looks like whoever is trying to upload the sea level rise thing, I guess it's it's red. I don't know what that means. I've not seen that before. So maybe it's it's having a hard time uploading or it's a weird format or something. Okay, I got you. So, okay, so apparently the, the red means that it's viewable only by the contributors and the public can't see it, I guess is what that means. Okay, so, so I guess if, if it's red, it doesn't mean that it's a problem. It just means that it's, it's not visible to the general people looking through the book, I think is what it means. So that's cool. I got you. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, and how are we doing on media? So it looks like we got about 33 or so items up there so far. Cool. I'd uploaded a few ahead of time. Is it making sense? Anybody stuck or have questions or is it just you guys just sort of working through the process? Everybody's asleep on Monday morning probably. I see. I tried uploading it um, in I guess a file format that wasn't compatible for like the media so I have to convert it into a PDF. And it oh, okay, cool. Tell me, tell me Jessica, what, what uh, just out of curiosity, what was the format? Do you remember? Um, it's not JPEG. It's the other like image one. It's H E I C. Oh, oh, oh from, yeah, the, like the, from the iPhone. From the iPhone. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm sure you guys know this, but that's a that's a little um, for those of you that have iPhone. That's just a little extra. Um, it, it's uh, saves the images and with a little bit less space, and you can always go into your settings if you want to, and 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 tell even though that's the default setting for iPhone, you can always say, hey, make it a save things as JPEG anyway. And then if you're sending it to your friends that have an Android or something like that, it doesn't uh, cause issues, but, um, but it's all good, it's all good. Anybody else having any uh, bumps in the road or anything they're wondering about? For the uh, YouTube link, are we just hyperlinking the text to it or do we need to? Yeah. Okay, cool. That, that, that's fine for now. That's fine. You can also just link in the media. You can also just put the hyperlink in the media as well. Um, but, but yeah, just, just, yeah. Selecting the text is good enough for right now. We're just 
making sure everybody knows how to do that. Let me just show you guys, I wanna show you one thing. So, uh, well, there's lots of things to show you, but, but I just wanna highlight one thing really quickly. So, um, let me see, am I sharing my screen with you guys? There we go, okay. So um, let me just show you one little thing here. <clears throat> so now when I'm posting stuff here, if it doesn't say anything explicitly, that means I created it or it's you know completely creative commons without any attribution needs or anything like that <clears throat> if it's anything else if I, if I listed it off a website got it from a journal article or whatever that's cool but we just got to make sure we reference where that media comes from and in most cases what we're doing from an for an educational standpoint most of what we're doing it's okay to do that <clears throat> if we were making money and even indeed sometimes even not even though we're making money. Some folks very strictly enforce their copyright, which is their right. So we, but generally speaking, we use what's called fair use, which means in an academic or educational context, we can, um, you know, quote or, 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 or post a, a subsample of the whole of someone's work um, for uh, education, argumentative, um, artistic, or other purposes. Nevertheless, um, anything that I didn't take or anything that isn't just completely open to, you know, open wide open on the web, uh, I will uh, make sure I attribute, uh, you know, reference whoever it is, right? And so, that, so it's very clear that we know where this material came from. <clears throat> One, it's just fair and we're giving credit where credit's due. But two, if there were to be an issue uh, that that, that fish was misidentified, I call it a snapper and it's actually a jack or, or something like that. Um, we could go back and say, oh, well, it's because the, the image was, was mislabeled or something of that nature. So there's several reasons why we wanna make sure we have transparency um, and, and we aren't taking credit, which could be considered plagiarism, right? Where, where credit is due. So for example, let's say I have this image here and everybody can see my, everybody can see my screen, right? Uh, so I'm going to go to media here. I'm going to upload it. Now I've gone to a website. I've downloaded an, an image. So I have an image here. So I'm going to go, uh, upload file. You guys know how to do this now. And I'm going to choose my file and it is, what is it? Oh, shoot. I just screwed up because I just posted that for, sorry, 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 sorry. Hold on. Okay. I think it was this one. Now, um, best practices here, I'm gonna, now we can generate a, 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 a tag from this, right? If you guys were paying attention to what these tags mean, I'm just gonna call this shipping, right? Or maybe I'll call it a tanker, something like that. We should always endeavor to follow best practice. So if we're just throwing something up as a decorative thing, a, a pretty banner, that's fine. If that's the case, I would just say, decorative image, right? But in most cases, we're probably not, in this context of this assignment, we're, in future assignments, we're probably not gonna be just putting up decorative images. We probably want to illustrate something. So in this case, you haven't seen the picture yet, but, but trust me, it's a picture of a, a, a shipper, a, a, a big giant international um, shipping tanker, right? So I'll just say international cargo, container ship on the ocean. Okay, so what's that do? Again, that, that says for folks that might be hearing impaired or, or have some other issues, um, the, the um, tools they use to interpret the website, this will help them understand what that is. And what we find is with these um, so-called universal design approaches to digital media, digital publishing and things, it might seem a little lame sometimes, like, oh man, I gotta type out 
what this is. You don't have to spend 17 million paragraphs, just a quick, you know, few words here to summarize what it is. If we have something like a map, that is very difficult to, you know, to think of a map with all the different political boundaries and geographic elements and maybe data visualizations on there. That's, that's pretty hard, but we could, we could still say, um, you know, a map of Southern Californian counties with the amount of roadkill um, observed on them, right? And so, so it might take us a few seconds more to enter that, that image or in, enter that uh, item into our, um, into our digital space, but it, it definitely helps and make it, makes it accessible to everyone. So it creates a more inclusive learning environment, but also, also it helps you out. Because if we just uploaded a picture, I just said ship, or the title was ship, <clears throat> right? Or shipping, let's say, let's say I just made the title shipping, right? Um, and then later on, I'm trying to figure out what that thing is. If I typed in shipping, I might get a bunch of references to people that are sending Amazon deliveries uh, around or something about Amazon delivery drones or UPS or something of that nature, right? By adding a few more words, it makes it clear that this is not a shipping, you know, mailing stuff shipping, but this is actually international oceanic uh, large vessel going. And so that means that when I type in and do my, my character, my text-based searches, it makes it that much easier for this item to be discovered by myself or other people who are looking for it. So again, with most, as with most of these universal design concepts, there's lots of upside and relatively little downside, maybe with a little teeny bit more time to get stuff up. But um, the best practice is when you guys do this from here on out, um, you know, the title and the little brief descriptor. Then the other thing I want to mention, so here is, here's that image. Here's that image that I uploaded, right? Okay. So I'm going to copy this link right here. Copy this link. I'm going to go back to my site. Now, right now, if I were to say upload, it would be done and it would be good. And that would be, you know, that would work. But I want to make sure that my reference to this, just like if I was citing data from a, a scientific paper, I want to make sure I cite the authors. Same thing here. I want to cite the authors. Now, oftentimes it isn't clear who took the photo. Um, but nevertheless, I can at least attribute the, the internet source where I got that photo. If I could, if there, if it said, you know, photographer, blah, 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 taken in Greece in 2019 or something, yes, I should include all that data, but usually we don't have that. But what I'm going to do here is check it out. So see right here, it says metadata. Um, again, there's all kinds of great stuff we can do. I don't want to overload you, but I just do want to point out this really one key one. So I'm going to hit add additional metadata. Remember, metadata is data about the data. So in this case, information about the visual object or, or the, the media object. So I'm gonna smack this. And then here's some additional things I can add in. The time, the date, et cetera. And while all that could be great, I'm gonna smack this one that says source. So I'm gonna go boink, and I say add field. Now check it out. Now there's an additional line that has shown up <clears throat> Uh, in my uh, dialog box here. And so I can go back, and again, remember I just copied that link so I can come to here, I can push paste, and now I can say upload. Now, now the tanker is up there, there's a descriptor of what it is, and there's the link. So again, I don't have to type this ever again. I can use this multiple places in my book. I can use something you posted in, you can use something I posted in. And because we have it referenced properly, never a problem as to where that came from or if there's a question about you know, where it is, we can, we can track it down. And that's what we're looking for. Attribution, source, all that great stuff of, of good solid scholarship. Okay? All right. Um, how are we doing here? Uh, okay, we'll go for another, hmm. go for another minute or so, and or a couple minutes, and then we'll, we'll take a break. So I'll just want to, uh, do one more exercise here, and then when we finish this exercise, we'll, we'll, we'll turn it into a, a little bit longer break. So the other thing you can do, which is really cool, again, because this is created by, oh, sorry, questions so far? Is this making sense, everybody? Let me, let me make sure I'm looking at um, screen. Everybody, everybody good? Is this making sense? Yeah. Am I going too slow? Am I going too fast?
It's perfect. Oh, you're going just right, not too fast, not too slow. Okay, okay, all right, good. So let me jump back here. Let me jump back here to this. Okay, so the last thing before our break, I just want to note is, again, this was created by librarians, and this is created to try to really add to visual culture or, 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 or to uh, um, uh, really make it easier. So if you think about it, a film, right? Uh, well, <laughs> what a horrible example. Nobody can go to the movie theaters anymore and everything's closing and the world's ending. Um, but uh, let's imagine it was a year ago or a year from now. <laughs> um, so when I was... <clears throat> When I was your age, and I was an undergrad, um, the film studies classes were always really popular classes because we could see these old mo movies that we never really ever saw. Or maybe, you know, there was a 25th anniversary screening 10 years ago that was in the movies, but, but we didn't have the on-demand stuff. So a lot of times we would go to, or people would sneak in, most of the film studies classes were at night because, you know, a film goes for two hours or sometimes more, right? especially the artsy fartsy ones can get really long. And so um, that's hard to do in like a when, middle of the day on Wednesday, right? So most of the film studies classes tended to have their screenings <clears throat> in the evening. So a lot of people would sneak in and just see all these cool movies. That was important because the, the professors that were teaching film theory or cultural analysis, whatever the hell they're doing, um, they, they, um, had no other mechanism to convey to the to the viewers, to you, the students, the consumers of the media, other than just showing the video, or excuse me, other than showing the movie, the film, right? Okay, so now, as we think about stuff now, we have it on our phones, we have it on our computers, all that stuff, right? You guys can watch just about any movie you want, as long as you have some cash in your wallet, you can pretty much see anything or most things. Um, but now we can do much more, though right? We can start to, inside the display of the information itself, we can add additional value, right? You can bring some cool insight. So uh, one of my friends, a couple of my friends and I were writing a paper, I'm sure it'll take us like 20 years, writing a paper on Southern California vegetation changes from the 1960s and 70s to now. And so we're watching all these old movies, Chips, uh, Columbo, all these things that filmed all around Southern California, and a lot of times they actually would have like a chase scene or there's some drama scene and we can actually um, recognize the area and we can go back to it now and we can look at how the vegetation has changed. And so in that case, if we were showing a clip from chips or a still image from a film, right, I might want to add some additional information. Similarly, if we're showing a picture of overfishing, right, you could just put up a picture of overfishing and that could be totally cool, but maybe you have some additional insight. So what we can do with this tool is we can actually annotate that media. So we can add additional things. And that's what I'm showing you right here. So here in this, this is a, um, a, some architectural images uh, of, of whatever this part of Los Angeles. And if you look closely, what you see is there's a, there's a green box. So we've taken the media just like you've already done. We've, we've embedded the media in the page. We've uploaded the media and it's all good. But then we've come in and the author has said, hey, there's something special about this part that says 3580. And he or she has gone in and, and, and highlighted that area and then annotated it, added some comments that adds additional learning, additional value, a different, additional insight to, to, that, um, to that item. Okay, and so uh, what you can, all you have to do if you wanna do that, you go find your image, now, and again, now, since we're all doing this as a group, I should have said this earlier, but I haven't. We're all authors on this. So we all have, we can all screw each other's stuff up. So don't screw each other's stuff up. <laughs> but we can, we, it's not as if I'm the king and you're my subjects here. We're all peers now in this, in this digital creation space. So you can see my stuff. I can see your stuff right? And so you can come to my picture, your picture, whatever. You can click this thing. Uh, so you, you, you go back, you select your image uh, in, the, in the media uh, tab. And then you come up and you can hit the paper clip and you can insert a comment right there. And you can do the same thing in video. Uh, there, are, there is a caveat that I think some of the video annotations, if, you're, if the video is being played back on a small mobile phone, sometimes those annotations don't display correctly. 
but you can still do it. You can still augment video. You can augment still images. Or excuse me, I didn't say augment. I, I said augment. I should have said annotate is the, or put a comment in is the, the pro appropriate term. And then when we come back and see the photo, um, we would see that uh, box, in this case, a sort of blue, bluish teal box. And when I put my cursor over it, it's going to pop out and, and give us some feedback or some insight. And there could be a, lots of stuff in there. There could be a whole bunch of text. There could be hyperlinks in there. There could be all kinds of uh, a deep analysis. It doesn't have to be, but it can be. And again, you can do the same thing with a video. You just scroll down uh, to where it is in that page, and you would, you would get this dialog box, and you can um, hit the plus, and you could go to the particular point in the video and say where you wanted it. So this is particularly helpful if it's a long video, right? So if you're, if you're talking, oh, I want to talk about over harvesting and there's a two hour documentary and you're like, oh God, you know, I really want to show this thing from 15 minutes to 18 and a half minutes. You can do that with, with this tool. Okay, so here we go. I want you guys to go back to one of the photos that you, that you or images, excuse me, that you uploaded and I want you to just annotate it. So go back to the media page, edit, go to the paper clip uh, 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 dialogue and draw a little box and just type in a word or two or a couple words and then see what it looks like. So right now we're, we're, we're beyond our break time. So I got, uh, let's see, on my official time piece, I got 9.12. So we're overdue for our 10 minute break and I wanna give you guys 15 minutes. So um, we're gonna reconvene at 9.27. Uh, so that, that's 10 minute break plus five minutes to do this, okay? So 9.27, I'll see everybody back here. Ready, set, go. People are okay with the annotation? Making sense? Yep. Yep, okay, cool. All right, great. Cool, so I just put in, a, in the chat a quick link. I mentioned at the start, I just wanted to get a bead for how people are doing. So simple one question, anonymous thing, just one to five, you know, one, I'm rocking it. I'm doing awesome. Five, I'm, it sucks. I'm doing poorly. Just, you know, in general, not so much this class, just in general, your, your bead on how this online thing is going this fall. So if you guys can do me a favor and just click that uh, Google form in the, um, in the chat and just take that anonymous thing for me to help me get a sense of how everybody's doing. I'd appreciate it. Okay. Uh, then if everybody is good, we're going to keep going. Let me share my screen. Okay, great. So everybody should have annotated stuff. Sounds great. Um, uh, and you can also uh, put annotations in other pages and things of that nature. <clears throat> okay, the next thing I wanted to talk about was... Um, how things are related, how, how you know, one page is related to another page in this scalar environment. The relationships between pages in this tool are referred to as paths. Um, there, there's several different types of relationships, but the, the um, key one I wanna talk about are, are, the, are the pathways. So here we are, we're at a page. Um, if we wanted to define the relationship, define the pathway, say we, the, we, I want you to start at this page and then go to this other page and then go to this other page, for example, we'd want to make sure that those other pages were linked to my page in some way, shape, or form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that page uh, and that I've already created. And I'm going to go up and smack the pencil icon, the edit icon. <clears throat> okay, and then we'll get to, it'll look like this. We got this dialog box. And um, we then go down to the bottom, and you'll see several different uh, things down there. I'm going to click on the relationships uh, tab, the relationships um, text. And then when I do that, you'll notice a, a few things come up. We can comment, so I can give feedback on this to one of my fellow students if I wanted to. <clears throat> Just like before, we could annotate certain things. We can add tags. But the thing I want to talk about right now is the pathway. So I can then click on the, so I've, I've clicked edit. 
I've clicked on the bottom relationships. I've clicked path or paths, I guess it says. And we'll get something that looks like this. Now, in this case, this, this landing page, I've added in some, as, as essentially to serve as a table of contents, I've added in the broad, uh, or at least some of the broad categories that we're focusing on for our case studies. So I've added in California Mariculture, I've added in California Peers, et cetera. And so what that's gonna mean is, <clears throat> and if I wanted to add more things, I would just click this Add More Content button if I decided, you know what, I don't actually like, I don't want to have invasive species here, right? I can click remove. And so this is gonna essentially be nesting and say, hey, I, I want the flow of this book or flow of the reader to go from this page to one of these others. Now it could be a single, it could be a single link at the bottom and have them go to another place. Or as in this case, it could be a multi, uh, you know, a, a, a multi-split um, type of geometry. So that's how we would do that. Okay, so now everybody should have at least two pages, right? You had your first page and your second page. So I want you to practice that and make sure you can do this. And so I want you to have your second page be, uh, or a, I want there to be a path from the first page to the second page. So you're just gonna go to your first page, hit edit, um, and uh, go down to relationships, click the path, and then um, you will add in the, it'll take you to a dialog box, you'll, you'll add in your page number two, and then hit save and view, and you can see if it worked. So we'll just take a quick uh, minute or so, this should be pretty fast to do. Okay, everybody good? That makes sense? Show of thumbs, people are good? My gallery view. Yeah, cool, okay. Anybody stuck on that? That meant not making sense to anybody? Looks like most people are, uh, are thumbs up. Well, Colas is actually clapping hands, so she's rocking it. She isn't just merely finger thumbing it, she is slapping it, she's doing great. Okay, cool, all right. Let's finish off this sucker then. Let me keep this guy going. Oh, maybe you guys can't see my screen share. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so, um, so great. So now, now we, we can figure out how to start making relationships and you can go from your first pit, your first um, and it's up to you guys how you want to organize your little sections. Maybe you want to have it be a landing page and then you can break off to all these other sections. Maybe you want people to move in a more linear fashion. Maybe you want to have them first go to the, the historic context and then the, the you know, more recent history and then current day. That, that's up to you how you decide to make your um, relationships go. But realize that that's very simple to do, and the power is in um, is in your hands. Okay, so the, then uh, the last little thing I just wanted to mention here is that we can assign attributes to all of the stuff we're talking about. So we've created a page, we've created a um, an image, and we can do that through a mix of of what these guys refer to as tags and categories and metadata. Metadata tends to be more of the kind of thing that is uh, um, an absolute uh, inherent property of that, of that item. So the date it was created, the uh, uh, geographic location of where it took place, those kinds of things. Tags are much more fungible. Tags are what we decide in the context of our creative process um, is, is, is how we want to um, um, add additional insights and information to the things we've created. So everything that you create uh, is gonna need at least one tag. And this is, this is the thing that I, again, this is the first time I've done this, I'm, I'm not sure the best way to do this. Um, and so we need to have some kind of consensus because we want to be using a, a, a similar constellation of these attributes. We don't want, you know, one group over here using, um, 
uh, I don't know, ecological fragmentation and this group over here saying habitat destruction, for example, right? So we wanna make sure that we're using the same terms if we're trying to convey the same concepts. But then similarly, as we're organizing the themes, we wanna make sure that we've, we've represented all the, you know, that we've covered the, the range of the types of uh, things people might uh, respond to. How we wanna do tags is up to us. People can do it temporally, people can do it geographically, you can do it, uh, you know, which is the most popular theme wise, topic wise. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, okay. So everything needs at least one tag. Um, some things need metadata, right? So when we talk about a map, for example, we need to know where the map was, uh, the, the projection, things of that nature. But, but certainly every item, uh, whether that's a text or that's a, a, a media item, uh, needs to have at least one tag. So then we get to what are the tags? And uh, I, I'm not sure how to do this. So I think what we'll do is we'll sort of uh, put this part on pause for now. And I want you guys to start thinking about this and start maybe trying this a little bit, um, but, but, but particularly trying it at the conceptual level. So what would my tags be? So I'm doing, I'm doing, my group said that I'm in charge of this subsection of our write-up. So for me, what would, what are the key tags here? Is it a temporal thing? Is it a spatial thing? Is it a management type of thing? And so I've just put a few things up here like shipping, habitat fragmentation, invasive species, pollution, history, bureaucracy, terrestrial, marine, uh, energy, California, over harvesting, fishing, food in general, seafood, maybe that's too, maybe that's too duplicative, a shoreline specifically, the immediate coastal fringe, a climate change success problem. Some of you are focusing more on the Pacific Ocean, not necessarily just California, so put Pacific Ocean in there. But there's a, a wide range of potential tags we could use. So um, without writing anything down right now, I'm just curious if you guys can uh, give me some ideas of what the things you're thinking about um, are or, or could be with, re with regards to tags. Pause my screen share so I can see everybody. Well, when you guys think about the, the writing that you've been doing so far on your, on your case studies, what are some of the, the key tags? Americulture, Quinn said Mariculture. Okay, cool. Eco friendly. Okay, eco friendly, sustainable, something of that, some of that flavor. Okay, cool. Uh, plastic. So Vaughn said plastic. Uh, another one would be erosion. A lot of the ones you had up, I've actually seen before. Quite a few. I'm sorry, you said you have seen them or haven't seen them? I, I have seen a lot of them. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Uh, we also got, let's see what else we have in the chat. We have Antarctic, bioaccumulation. Uh, oh, another Antarctic. Oh, no, J Jennifer said it twice. Okay, sorry. I was like, man, two people said Antarctic. Uh, carbon footprint. Okay, yeah, climate change. That, that, yeah, sure, of course. Good. Anything else about your, another one might be infrastructure. We haven't talked that much about it yet, but, but infrastructure is sort of a key thing in our coastal zone. Uh, sorry, what else? We have carbon footprint, eco-label, conservation, uh, sustain, sustain, sustainability or sustainable. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, well, it was not on there. It was not on there. Whoever said that? Nick, yeah, I, I hadn't put that on there, but that's a good one. So if we start thinking about these, we probably want to um, try to create as much of a um, as, um, intellectual parity as we can get. So if we talk about, if we have the option for sustainability or sustainable, we probably want another example of unsustainable, right? So if we're gonna, it probably doesn't make that much sense to talk about Antarctica, we should probably wanna talk about Antarctic or the polar regions maybe, temperate regions, tropical regions, something like that. So, so if, it's, if it's worthy of a tag, we probably wanna step back and think about, okay, what if, what if something is uh, you know relevant in this context, but it's not that area. It's not Antarctica. What would we put in 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 that uh, you know 
what would those areas get tagged as? You can also do it taxonomically, right? If you want to talk about the organism that's the focus of this, is it people? Is it uh, fish? Is it algae? Is it, uh, you know, I don't know, birds? Um, so, so taxonomy is another one that could be used. Any other, any other thoughts from what you guys have been writing on, writing about so far? No, I did. I just did such a great job that I covered just about everything in those that first flush of things. Interesting. Um, anything could be made into a tag. Yeah, anything can be a tag. So yeah, so I mean, I mean, right. So we have to figure out, and again, not having done this with with a class before, I'm not sure where the line is. Clearly, we don't want to tag every single possible word because that would be, because again, the idea here is we want to be consistent, right? We want it so that if 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 Jeremy writes something or Raphael writes something or Zach writes something, whatever, that that it gets tagged consistently. So if it's so narrow and it's so numerous, uh, that is that's not really particularly helpful, right? But if it um, if it can be maybe made a little teeny bit more generic, so that it, it it's more of a, a universal term that could be used in different contexts, that would be really helpful. Because then as we're um, organized, so the other thing I've we're making our book the way we're making it. But another tool that, or another um, aspect of this digital first um, publishing is we can also redo the book on the fly. So once we start having enough of these tags and enough pages, we could say something like, tell me about climate change. And maybe nobody wrote specifically about climate change. You guys write about different little parts and aspects of climate change. But if it was tagged as climate change, like this paragraph or this page was tagged as climate change and that, that uh, map was an illustration of climate change and, you know, and stuff like that, you can then say, boop, and on the fly, Scalar will, will generate a new book for you. And that new book will be about you know, your criteria. So let's say it's climate change. Similarly, if we wanted to look at um, historic management practices, not, not current or future or whatever, Right. If, if everything was that was that happened back in the day was tagged with some kind of um, term to know it was historic or know it was old or know it was previous, something like that, you could go boop and the book would resort itself out as, you know, a, a history of conservation in the coastal zone type thing. So for all those reasons, we need to be we need to um, we don't just want to sort of randomly throw out tags. We want to. Um, and we can, we can toss them in there, which is cool, but we need to discuss them before we fully apply them and go, okay, yeah, these are the five we're using, these are the 10 we're using, these are the 20 we're using, and then everybody will know to apply them um, uh, uh, consistently. Okay, all right, cool. So it sounds like uh, you guys need to think about that a little more, but that's cool. And then just to finish up, uh, I think I have another couple, like a slide or two over here. I think we're good. Let's see. Yeah, so again, uh, these are the ones I had. It looks like the ones that you guys suggested so far. There's a few geographic ones. There are a few things related to sustainability um, uh, that, that we could um, also add in here. Okay. Well, you, would, you would do the tag by just going that same relationship window, go down to tag, and you can add... Um, Oh, oops, that one's out of, out of place. Anyway, anyway, but at the bottom, you guys saw that we can add tags uh, down there as well. So cool. All right. Let me kill this. Let me pause this.